Clicking on this video is the best thing you could have done because to everyone watching, I'm going to be handing over some of my anatomy notes to you for free that have taken me hours and hours of time and effort to make and that have helped me score really, really well on all of my anatomy OSCE stations. Not only that, but I guarantee that if you follow this method for revising anatomy that I'm going to share in this video, you will definitely see a difference in how much you're able to understand, remember and impress your anatomy tutors in your anatomy sessions. So make sure you watch right up until the end, not only to learn what I think is the best process to study anatomy, but also to find out how you can get my notes. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hiba and I'm a fourth year medical student studying at the University of Manchester. I really, really enjoy studying anatomy and I always perform really well on anatomy exam questions and on anatomy OSCE stations. However, it wasn't always that way. In fact, when I first started medical school, I absolutely hated anatomy just because it was so different to anything else I had ever studied up until that point. And I just constantly found myself asking the people around me, how do I study for anatomy? And honestly, the answers that I was getting weren't that great. I would have full on conversations with medical students who were in the year above me who would advise me on how to revise anatomy. And I would leave those conversations still not knowing what to actually do. So it took a lot of trial and error, but eventually I created a system for how to revise anatomy in a way that you actually understand it and remember the content. And I personally think this is the best way to do it. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you that process and that system System that I developed and also all of the resources that I use to revise anatomy. So the first thing that you need to understand is that revising anatomy is a process. If you actually want to learn anatomy properly and have a good understanding of it, then there are many steps that you're going to need to take and just looking through an anatomy textbook the night before your anatomy session is not going to do it. The first thing that's key to anatomy is making sure that you've done some studying before you go to your anatomy session. If you show up to an anatomy session without having done any work, then I can guarantee you you're going to be clueless in the session. Anatomy is a really, really different subject to anything that you've probably studied before. And when you go to your sessions, you're not going to just be able to make up the names of muscles or the names of nerves. You have to be familiar with them before you go into the session. At the vast majority of medical school, you'll be told beforehand what you're going to be covering in your next anatomy session in order for you to be able to prepare for it. So say for example, your anatomy session is on the Wednesday, you need to spend a day before Wednesday, either on the weekend or Monday or Tuesday, revising for anatomy. When you're studying anatomy before you actually go to the session and it's the first time you're learning that topic, I would not use any textbooks and I would not use any practice questions. This is because if you haven't come across the topic before, it's going to be really, really difficult to understand what the textbook is actually talking about or referring to because they tend to use very technical terms. And even though textbooks will have pictures, there isn't a picture associated with every sentence and it can often be really difficult to understand what the textbook is referring to. So before going to my anatomy sessions, I would use two resources. The first one of these is Ackland's Video Atlas of Human Anatomy. Now, some of you may have heard of it, but for those of you who haven't, these are a series of videos that are made by an incredibly well-known surgeon that go through every single structure of the body, every organ, every bone, and every muscle. And the reason that it's such a fantastic resource is because it doesn't use animations or models in the videos. The videos actually show actual prosections of real human body parts. So this way you can see and be prepared for exactly what you're going to be seeing in your anatomy session. Now before I talk about how I actually use the videos, I didn't just simply watch them through, I'm going to tell you how you can actually access Ackland's Video Atlas. So if you type in Ackland's Anatomy to Google, the first link will take you to the website. If you click on that, you can see that there are a huge number of videos divided into the upper and lower extremity, the trunk, the head and neck and the internal organs. When you click on one of those sections, you can see that it's subdivided into a huge number of short videos that last between two to four minutes, and they cover literally every single detail about that part of the body. If you click onto internal organs, you'll get videos for every single organ in the body, and if you click on any video, it'll ask you to sign in. If you're in the UK, there's a 99% chance that your medical school already subscribes to Ackland Anatomy, so you don't need to buy a subscription. Click on sign in with Open Athens, then select UK Access Management Federation. And I'm almost 100% sure you'll find your university. When you click on your university, it will just take you to your university's login page and you just log in there normally to verify you're a student and you'll have access to all of the videos. If for whatever reason you can't access the Atlas through the website, 
There are some videos that they've uploaded on YouTube, but I'm not 100% sure if all of them are there. So when using these videos to revise, you shouldn't just simply watch them through. That's actually a mistake. Whilst you watch the Aklan videos, you want to have a notepad and also different colored pens with you. What you want to do is you want to draw out every single thing, every structure that you're seeing in the Aklan videos and do that for all of the different angles of the structures that are shown. Honestly, you don't need to be an artist, literally just draw what is in front of you. For example, in this particular video, Aklan shows the distal end of the humerus. So in my anatomy book, I would title this page as the distal end of the humerus, and then I would draw out exactly what I see in the video. Then as you watch the video, Aklan gives you loads of different details, points to different parts of the bone, gives you many details about the ligaments and the muscles and all of the things that attach to the bone. And with your colored pens, what you want to do is annotate that information onto the diagram. Once you've done this for the anterior aspect, when Aklan moves the camera to a different angle, so say to the lateral view or to the posterior aspect, you want to do the same thing. So you want to draw out the posterior aspect, draw what you see, draw what the structure looks like from the back, and then annotate all of the details on. Once you do that, you'll end up with notes that look something like this. Even though these videos seem quite simple, you'll be amazed at how much of a detailed diagram you end up with. And because you've drawn all of these different angles and labeled them yourself, you'll be able to visualize and understand the anatomy in a three-dimensional way, which won't happen if you go straight to looking at a textbook. There's also a transcript with every video, so once you're done watching the video, you can go through the transcript and see if you've missed anything out. For a video that was about four minutes long, depending on how many structures are shown in the video, it could take me up to 15 to 20 minutes to just properly study that one video, understand the anatomy of the structures that he was showing, and draw an annotated diagram of it. And for every video, I would usually end up with two to five pages of annotated diagrams. How many videos you watch a week obviously is going to depend on how many are relevant to your anatomy session that week, but say there are about five to six videos that are relevant to your session that week, it could take you a good couple of hours, even a few hours, to go through all of the detail in the videos, despite the videos actually being quite short. After watching Aklan's videos, the second resource that I used before going to my anatomy sessions was Sam Webster's YouTube channel. Sam Webster is an anatomy tutor who makes the best YouTube videos that actually make you feel like you're being personally taught by him. He has playlists on his channel that cover top to toe anatomy and his videos are typically longer than Aklan's and are more like actual teaching sessions. So when you're watching Sam Webster's videos, you'll already have a good understanding of the structures through watching Aklan's videos. So you don't need to draw out every structure like you would in the Aklan's videos, but I'd still make notes whilst I was watching his videos in the same way that I'd make notes whilst I was watching a lecture. So say you're watching a Sam Webster video where he's talking about the heart. I would then open up my notepad to where I have drawn my heart diagrams from watching Aklan's videos on the heart. And there I would add in all of the extra information that Sam Webster talks about. What is really unique about Sam Webster and why I recommend watching him as well as watching Ackland is because not only does he convey the information in a way that's really really easy to understand, he takes you through the basics really really well, but he will also add in some extra details. For example, whilst Ackland will show you a pro section and show you exactly how it is, Sam Webster, through his models, will talk about why a certain part of anatomy is relevant to clinical practice. Or if something that Sam Webster knows comes up a lot in exams, he will also talk about that in a lot more detail as well. So after spending a good day of watching these videos and studying them in detail, I would end up with a good pile of diagrams and notes that I have created, and I would just have a really, really good understanding of what exactly it is that I'm going to be seeing in my session that week. At this stage, I would also identify any questions I have or anything that has confused me so far in the research that I've done and then based on what I've studied so far I would make a list of questions and I would literally take in a list of questions to my anatomy session that I would want to ask for clarification on in the session. If you haven't done any work before the actual anatomy session you're going to deprive yourself of the opportunity to ask questions 
to your anatomy tutor who's there for the purpose of answering any potential questions on that topic because nothing will make sense to you and literally everything will just be one big question. Because you've made detailed notes and you've annotated them and labeled them and because you've actually seen pro sections, not just models, not just animations or cartoons, because you've seen the actual human body part, if a tutor in your session points to a specific part of the bone or points to a specific nerve, you will know exactly what that bone is. You will know exactly which nerve he's talking about because you've seen it at all of the different possible angles and you know from watching your videos and doing your studying that this nerve runs underneath this muscle for example. You will just be really really snappy at identifying all of the structures and recognizing all of the structures that your tutor is talking about because you will have already seen them. If you just read out of an anatomy textbook, especially before your actual anatomy session, it's not quite so memorable. So now we'll talk about what you have to do after your anatomy session. Remember, revising anatomy, studying anatomy is a process. It's not going to just take one day for you to understand the topic. Now that you've had the anatomy session, it would have really helped you to consolidate all of the learning that you did yourself on your own. And you've also have had the chance to ask any questions and get anything that you're confused about clarified by your anatomy tutor. Now, after your anatomy session, now that you've had a good basis and a good foundation to your learning and to the topic, now is when you would want to get an anatomy textbook, open it up to the relevant chapter, and now you would make type notes on the topic that you've been studying. And at this point, you'll be able to understand what all of the terms in the textbook mean and what they're all referring to, because you'll have had multiple opportunities to see these structures in three dimensions. You can use any textbook that you like or that you have easy access to. It doesn't really matter. All of them are very, very similar, although my go-to was always Snell's Clinical Anatomy by Regions, but any textbook will do. And this is just going to solidify your knowledge on the topic. So again, say your anatomy session was on the Wednesday, you could make these notes on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, any day in that week after your session, but before you start preparing for your next anatomy session. Now these notes should take you some time to make and be really, really thorough because this is what is going to form your basis of revision material when you come to revising anatomy for your exams. You want to include lots of diagrams from the internet, lots of images, because remember now you'll be able to understand the nitty gritty of all of those tiny little labels that are on the diagram. You'll be able to understand what they now mean. You want to create tables, which are great for things like muscle origins and insertions and their actions and innovations. And you essentially want to make these typed up notes at the end of the week as exhaustive and comprehensive as possible. Make sure you find really good diagrams for the structures that you drew out by hand that week and make sure you put them into your notes as well because you want to make sure you include all of the information that you got from watching the videos that week but also add supplementary information in from the textbook. Because you want to make these notes as comprehensive as possible and essentially want to make it the go-to resource when it comes to revising for your exams, I also used to use information from Teach Me Anatomy. So basically what I'm saying here is just to really, really clarify, when you come to writing these notes at the end of the week after your anatomy session, you want to open up a Word document. And to create these notes, you want to have in front of you your own personal notes that you've made throughout the week from watching the videos and your anatomy sessions, a textbook of your choosing open to the relevant chapter, and Teach Me Anatomy opened up to the relevant page. And essentially what you want to do is combine those three resources to write detailed notes to make one mega resource on that topic, the Word document. And this mega resource, these final notes that you're writing should contain loads of good images, diagrams, tables, etc. from the internet that you want to add to your notes. The idea is that when you come to revise the anatomy topic for your exams, you now don't need to go through the rough drawings and notes that you made when you were first trying to understand the topic. You also don't need to go through a textbook and you don't need to go through Teach Me Anatomy because you'll have already filtered out all of the useful information and combined them into one ultimate set of notes. Making these notes should take you a good few hours at the end of the week and it's these notes of mine that I'm going to be sharing with you at the end of the video. So make sure you keep on watching until then. Lastly, after you've made your notes, if you've spent sufficient time on each part of the process, you should really be an expert on that topic at this point. So now is when you're going to attempt to do some practice questions. And it doesn't really matter where you access these questions from. Some universities will provide you with some practice questions that you can do at the end of the week um, on your anatomy topic, or you may decide to find another anatomy question bank online. As long as you find some questions to answer on that topic, that's fine. And you will make your learning really, really solid by answering 
answering questions from the information that you've learned throughout that week. Making sure that you do this every week before it's time for you to prepare for your next anatomy session will allow you to really keep on top of your anatomy work and make sure it doesn't add up over time because it will get too much to do if you leave it too late. If you follow this process to learn anatomy every week, not only will you have an excellent understanding of the topic by the end of the week because you'll have used so many different resources and so many different methods of learning, but you'll also end up with a beautiful collection of typed up, detailed and extensive notes that will then be there for you to revise from when it comes to your exams. At exam time, from those notes, you can make flashcards, you can put them into Anki, you can condense them further, you can make questions out of them. You can essentially do whatever you want to do to revise from those notes without having to scurry around through different resources when it's really close to the exams. So that is my recommendation of how to study for anatomy in a way that uses a variety of different resources and learning methods, which not only allows you to actually really fully understand while you're learning, but also allows you to keep on top of your work every week, stay on top of the content and allows you to end with a beautiful detailed collection of notes for your revision. Now, as promised, to anyone and everyone who's watched this video and wants an example of what my notes looked like at the end of the week when I'd finished revising for a certain subject, I'm going to be sharing that with you by email to help you out. You can choose one topic from any of these topics on the screen and I will send you my personal notes that I made for that topic. I'm sure these will be really, really helpful to you, not only as a revision resource, but also to help you figure out how you need to be structuring your own notes. If you want the notes, then you do need to meet the following requirements. You have to be subscribed to the channel, you have to like this video and also comment below which notes you'd like and what your email is and I will email those notes to you. I hope this video has been helpful and I've been able to explain the process of how I think you should revise anatomy for the best results in the most clearest way possible. If you did find it useful then please do leave this video a like and also subscribe to my channel, it really really helps me out and also remember you're going to need to be subscribed if you want the notes. Let me know if you try this method, if you use it, let me know how you got on. Let me know if you use a different method and if something else works for you because that might help someone else out as well. I apologize that this video has been a long one but I think that was necessary in order to fully explain my process of studying anatomy. Thank you so so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.